All right, so look, in a world of genuinely horrendous user interfaces, like, you know, the ones, right? The ones that aren't even scaled, or like the ones where the text is like too big or too small, the ones where like the colors like are too similar and you don't even know what you're looking at half the time. Wouldn't you want to have the one user interface that actually stands out? Like one that is visually good, meaning, you know, it looks nice. Maybe it has like a little cool animation whenever you like toggle it. And it's also set up in a way which just makes it very easy and good to use, right? Like, you know exactly what each section is supposed to be instead of, like, just a barrage of buttons that the developer just made in, like, 10 minutes. Consider this, like, a Harvard level of quality masterclass on user interface, okay? I mean, okay, look, not really. I'm sure there's, like, some guy out there who's made, like, a four-hour video on, like, every little user interface detail known to man. Like, people spend way too long trying to figure out, like, what the perfect color combination for their user interfaces. But you don't want that, right? You just want to make sure that, okay, my user interface doesn't suck, and I want to make it not suck in a relatively short amount of time, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. All right, let's go. So look, step number one, okay? Pick good colors, please. I know we just talked about colors, but I don't mean like the specific type of like, oh, this color is a little bit brighter than this one. I mean like, no, pick out a good combination of colors and assign every single color a specific role. So here's what I mean, okay? Let's say I have a frame, okay? So let's make a screen GUI, and then inside of it, let's make a frame. And by the way, just a quick tip, when you're dealing with these, you know, UI elements, when you go down to size, please just replace size with whatever number you want between like 0.1 and 1. Because what this will do is this will make it scaled across the screen. So if you set this to equal to 1, then it's going to cover the entire screen like so. But if you set it equal to like 0.1, it's going to cover 0.1% of the screen. And so then when it's in the scale mode, then, you know, you can resize it and it's automatically going to change the scale of it, which basically just means that like when you change the size of the screen, it's going to scale with the screen. And the reason we have to do this is because Roblox is dumb. And by default, it doesn't stretch with the screen. It just kind of stays like in the same shape, which is stupid. But look, that doesn't matter. Okay. Let's say in this frame, we also have a button. And then let's also make that button like, I don't know, 0.5 or something. And then let's give this button a UI stroke, which is basically just an outline. Right now it's outlining the text, which looks terrible. So let's set it to border. And yeah, there we go. And so let's use this UI as an example when talking about colors. So how would you color this okay like think about this well right now you might be thinking like oh but maybe blue might look good or maybe red might look wrong now if your answer was it depends on the vibe that my game is trying to give off that's the correct answer because look way too way too many games i mean roblox games right a lot of like actual games don't have this issue but like in roblox bro i swear i could be playing like some tragic like ptsd inducing war simulator like highly realistic with like terrible gore and just you know guns and all of that i don't know and then you click on the user interface and it's just like nice pink bubbly like hey guys hello friends with like you know flowers blooming obviously over exaggeration but like they don't do that but like you know what i mean right way too many games just have a thing where like you play it and the, the vibe that it's trying to give off is very clear to you be that it's a depressing vibe or it's a very happy vibe and the user interface barely mimics that now this isn't the case for big games because you might be thinking of like oh but i play a lot of these popular games and their user interface is actually good Duh, that's my point, right? So, okay, once we've identified the vibe that we want to give off, so let's say, for example, we're trying to make some racing simulator, okay? Some simulator where, like, you can run and you can get speed, okay, whatever. And, okay, this is where you kind of have to go off of your own intuition, okay? So what I'll do is inside of the screen GUI, I'll make something called a configuration. And a configuration, in case you don't know, it's basically just a folder. Like configurations and folders are literally the same thing. But configurations exist because while folders are just meant for, you know, general items, configurations are meant for, well, you guessed it, configurations, right? You're meant to put different values inside of them. And so inside of these, we can put color three values. So for example, right, let's say we have the first color and we want this to be the base color, okay? So like I said before, every single color must have a purpose, right? So you need a certain color for outlines and text and then you need another color for maybe like the backgrounds of buttons or like you know background two or something so you can do all of that here right so this is the base color and then let's say because we're making a speed game let's say maybe we want to make it you know this color we want to make it blue and then we can have another color but this time for outlines and then this color could just be like a darker blue and then we can have another color but this time it's going to be for text slash button outlines right so maybe this maybe maybe this color is for the main outline so like the outline of you know this thing 
but then the button outlines maybe we want them to be yellow right because like if we're making a speed game maybe it's like thunder right or like lightning or whatever and so what we could do right now right is let me just actually copy the same ui stroke over to the frame so then yeah what we could do is we could just say okay here's the base color okay we can copy this we can give it to the frame now it looks like this and then we can give it to the text button which now it looks like this and then we just do the same thing for the outlines right so for example the ui stroke uh, for you know the main one is going to look like this and then we can take this, you know, yellow golden color and then apply it for the text, which now looks like this, right? Now, is this a good color combination? That's up to you. Personally, I'm not a big fan, right? But like, can you imagine like if we have, let's say, a bunch of buttons or like, you know, just a lot of stuff going on, having a dedicated like color palette and knowing exactly like, okay, what colors are meant for, you know, which button or like which item or whatever it's gonna make it very easy for your gui to actually look nice even if the color combination you use is absolutely horrendous people can get used to that but what people can't get used to is like when the colors are all over the place but you know obviously still make a good color combination like a big bonus of these color configurations is that like you actually can like you know look at these and just kind of think like okay would these look nice together now while we're here i'll add on real quick and this should be a given if you've ever even touched roblox user interface before but please ensure that you actually know what all of these ui modifiers do so just make sure that like you use a gradient every once in a while so maybe like you have like a a big text here that says shop right and so then that shop text instead of just being blue it could have like a nice blue gradient where it goes from like darker blue to lighter blue and then you know you could give it corners you know make it actually look nicer like this basically just ensure that you know exactly like what tools you have to play around with and the way for you to do that is to literally just click type in ui and you'll see all of these you have stroke corner that's it these are all of the modifiers you can play around with the next thing which is very important is create your own gui elements so here's what i mean by this okay let's say we have a button to so like make, let's say we have a button to close the user interface okay and let's say this is an image button okay now what a lot of people would do with with this type of button is they would make a frame right and then they would make that frame into a circle and then inside of that frame they would add like a button and then when you click on the circle it, you know like with an x inside of it then the frame goes away this works and this could work for you know a certain gui like maybe your gui is like very bubbly or something sure but here's the thing a lot of good user interface i've noticed is custom made meaning that they make the buttons themselves like they go into some you know like adobe photoshop or whatever or like inkscape or canva or something and they make the buttons themselves and they don't have to look insanely professional literally just anything that doesn't look like a basic frame will look nice so like for example i looked up roblox ui right and yeah there are people literally giving these like free packs like you know custom icons like a twitter icon facebook icon discord icon custom coin icon you have these like you know custom buttons with like this like shine above them which you cannot do in roblox by default or like i said if you want to you could just go to canva and then just you know create a logo and i'll be honest this one is a bit more tricky because like the issue with canva is that unless you have canva premium it doesn't let you save the image with like the, a transparent background. So what I found is that like, okay, let's say I want to save this image. Let's say I want to just have this nice, I don't know, what is it? Let's say I want this to be my close button. Okay, let, let me just make it like red, like so. So then if I were to actually save this image as like a PNG, right? I can't set the background to be transparent because I don't have Canva Pro, which is kind of stupid. So the main workaround is that you take this design, you go to the site called remove.bg, which is absolutely free. Then you just drag it over here and then it just automatically removes the background for you so then you can download you go to create roblox.com and i know this is a lot of steps but this is just how roblox does things it's stupid but like you go to creations development items uh decals not images and then you go ahead you just upload the asset and then you name it whatever you want like i don't know exit button and then once you have actually uploaded it to Roblox, you need to copy the asset ID of this image. And from there is where you can have your, you know, button. And then you can give it the image like so. And then it's going to look like this, right? Right now it's still white because of the background color. But if I set the background transparency to one, now we just have this image, right? So it's going to look like this. Which, in case you didn't know, you aren't able to actually make this shape in Roblox. Like, okay, oh, fine. I'm sure you can make a bunch of frames that like overlay together and like you could rotate them in a perfect way to make a hexagon but no one's doing that okay so just make your own images you know add like add like a little shine to them just like we saw in the um yeah in this example like a little shine like this looks very nice and i promise you by doing this you will literally make your user interface stand out in front of maybe like 99.9 .9 of all roblox games because all of them just use default elements because they are good 
frames and buttons and image buttons they, like all of these things are good they're good and so everyone uses them and so they just lose their charm which is why i bet that like one of the games you play that's like big and popular their user interface is likely custom made all right so the next step and this one's actually very important and like i don't know a lot of user interfaces just don't do this for some reason and that is simply to just animate the user interface if inside of this frame i were to add a local script okay and let's say I were to detect whenever the user presses E, for example, okay? So user input service dot input began connect function. It gives us the input. And then we can check if the input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot E. And so do you know those user interfaces where like when you press a button or like when you press a key bind, they almost seem to like, like they're like down here. And then there, there's like an animation that plays that like brings them back up. So I'm thinking, what if we do exactly this? So like, for example, we can get the starting position of this frame by just saying local start position is then equal to script.parent because script.parent is the frame dot position, right? So this will give us the very first initial position, which is going to be the middle position. And I'm thinking we can also make the frame uh, invisible as well. So let's just do that. Let's just say script.parent.visible is equal to false. And then we need to actually understand like, okay, where do we want this frame to come up from? Because if we want this initial position to be over here, which actually I'm, ju I'm just now realizing we should call this end position because we want it to end up at this position. So the right terminology is like, okay, where do we want it to start? And we probably want it to start just at the very, very bottom of the screen, which it's not even <laughs> letting me go there. So let's go to the position and let's change the Y to be, I don't know, 1, 1.2. Sure, 1.2. So then we can just copy this position and then just say, okay, well then the local starting position, so local start position, and the way we can actually store a position of a user interface is we can say udim2, and then we can just paste all of this in. Now, I'm not too sure if it actually is going to work this way, just in case I'll remove these, you know, curly brackets, but I'm pretty sure it should work even with them. And in case you don't know what these numbers represent, the first one is the x scale, the second one is the x offset, and then Y scale, and then the Y offset. And really all we have to do at this point is detect if the script.parent is visible. So if script.parent.visible is equal to true, then we can do something else with it, right? But then else, meaning if it's equal to false, meaning we want to actually show it to the player, then what we can do is we can say script.parent.position is equal to the starting position. So we're going to position it down at the bottom. We're going to set script.parent to actually be visible, so equal to true. And then we're going to say game tween service create so tween service is just a way for you to basically make animations okay so what are we trying to animate we're trying to animate the script.parent the frame so we will give it the script.parent then it needs something called the tween info which is um it's kind of hard to explain but it's like configurations of the animation so like how long should the animation play out for and you know i want it to be quick so let's say 0.1 seconds and then there's a lot of other stuff which you don't have to do like if you don't do them they're gonna go back to their default state but like the easing style is pretty interesting so enum dot easing style dot and you have a lot of these stuff and basically this just determines like how the animation moves so linear means it moves at a constant speed but then bounce makes it kind of like bouncy so i personally recommend back just because it overshoots the target and then puts it back into place which does give it more of this like nice bouncy feel and then we need to just give it the property table so a table of all of the properties we want to change and so we want to set its position equal to the end position and then what we do is we play that tween and then if the script.parent is visible, uh, we could do a thing where like, you know, we create a new animation and make it go back down. But you know what? I'll give you the challenge to make that, okay? Because obviously you want to learn from this video, right? So you gotta, you gotta do this yourself, bro, because I'm not gonna be... I just said position. Damn. Yeah. Talking talking while recording is a little little difficult. And yeah, and so if I do it like this, what was our key? It was E, right? Yeah. So if I play the game right now and if I press E... Okay, so I just ran the game and it didn't work and I completely realized why it's completely my fault it's because i forgot to <laughs> move the frame back up we gotta just move it back in the middle and there we go that should work because what it was doing is like it was trying to get the script.parents.position but it was exactly the same as the start position so it wasn't even like moving it anywhere but let's see if we try now and then if i press e look at that boom <laughs> look how nice it looks it's a bit too quick so maybe you could do like a 0 0.2 or something right but like point still stands right that looks a lot more professional than if it just blinked into existence randomly and another thing that a lot of people do is like they add a blur effect whenever like the gui pops up right so maybe like they have a blur right and then like um when let's say this gets disabled the blur also goes away right and then maybe when it goes back up 
than they add a blur, right? So you could do something like this as well. And just another quick thing, you could also do the same for buttons as well. Like whenever the button gets a mouse hovering over it, you could play an animation that like makes it, you know, pop a little bit. So I could actually do this right now. I could say script.parents. What is it? Uh, text button. And then we could say mouse enter connect function. And then whenever the mouse enters, we could just do something like this. Honestly, I'll, I'll just copy the animation because I am a little lazy. And I guess for the position, we could take its current position. And then just set equals yeah, udem 2new We can give it all of this. And then maybe the Y scale could be like 0 0.3 instead of 0 0.2. And so now what's going to happen if we play the game is that that's crazy right we're still changing the script.parent we should be changing script.parent uh text button but that was pretty funny so if you do it like this there we go obviously the button moving here has no purpose whatsoever but you can kind of see how you can use this right like maybe when you hover the mouse over it like expands a little bit or maybe it like shrinks a little bit basically just more cool animations that make your user interface again i keep repeating this make it stand out and also just gives it more life in general it makes it feel more unique and more like responsive in a way right like when i hover my mouse over the button and then the button kind of expands it's nice because it responds to everything I do. And I don't know why that's nice, but it just is. And yeah, that's basically it. A final quick tip is to make sure that your GUI isn't cluttered and has everything easy to understand, okay? If you have a bunch of buttons or like a bunch of, you know, little, I don't know, menus or whatever, just, you know, make sure that it's not just a bunch of text. Make sure that like if you were a new player, that you could easily understand what is going on. Because way too many games have this thing where like their user interface is just insanely difficult to understand, which that just drives away a lot of players right so just try to not do that and i know that you know what we're left with right now is a gui that looks kind of mid but but like look to be fair if i were to actually put in like an hour making my own user interface you know combining everything like combining the fact that like like you know using the color palette using my own you know custom icons adding my own animations for you know every single little detail i could make a user interface that i would unironically say rivals even some of the biggest games because honestly some of their user interface is honestly kind of mid like it's it's working for them i guess but i don't know arsenal's user interface could be so much better and if you're just a beginner trying to learn roblox studio i do have a paid course which i've linked in the description and the pinned comment that basically teaches everything that you need to know about user interface so stuff like viewport frames right and then just every other thing about roblox studio in general so if you're willing to spend i think it was like 40 bucks on a six and a half hour course then you can find the link in the pinned comment. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.